Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. Another beautiful morning here started with another couple baskets of firewood. I've said it before, but the only way we're going to be able to get to all of this firewood sitting here behind me that we had thinned out of our woods is to do a little bit every day. So I think for the foreseeable future, most of our videos are either going to start or end with a couple baskets of firewood. Speaking of which, our goal when we set out was to do at least one basket a day. Let's go check and see how we're doing on progress. So this is the drying yard, and I think when we started we had 33 baskets. And in the last seven days, I think we've added another 14. So we've been averaging about two baskets a day, but I'm just curious what our inventory looks like right now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-three, thirty-four, and they're all the ones down here. 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. So 45 baskets. Each one of these is about a third of a cord. So that's what about 15 cords of firewood looks like right there. Anyway, today's video is not all about firewood. We're actually getting ready to hop in the excavator and go back in the woods and work on our trails. We've got to dig some stumps out of the middle of some trails, create some new trails and uh, do a little bit of grading work. And it's funny, when Klein Energy Services was, was here, they knew they were gonna tear the trails up some from the skitter, uh, but they know that Doug had that Bobcat T770 over there. And they said, you ought to have Doug come over here and, and whip these trails back into shape just because a, a tractor with a box blade can't really cut and fill like a skid loader can. And I kind of laughed because I knew I wasn't even gonna have to ask Doug. He was gonna wanna come over and do that because he just likes playing on equipment. Sure enough, that same day, six hours after that conversation with Klein, Doug said, hey, I gotta bring my skid loader with our dozer blade over here and uh, rip into these trails and get them all smoothed back out. And I told him the story and I said, I knew I wasn't gonna have to ask you. So uh, we're gonna take the excavator back, like I said, dig up some stumps, do a little cut and fill. And uh, Doug's gonna be meeting us back there with his Bobcat T770 and the dozer blade. All right, so we grabbed our grading bucket and the first thing we're gonna do is try to pull all of this excess material from this side of the trail back onto the trail. As you can see, this logging road here is cut into the hillside. You know, it slopes down like this and as they were dragging the logs out, the logs were wanting to all slide downhill, taking material with them and uh, really carving out the bottom side of this hill. So now this um, trail has a pretty good slope to it. And rather than having Doug come in here with a dozer and cut on the high side and fill the low side, I wanna bring as much of that material back up as we can to eliminate getting into the roots on the high side of this trail. So that's first on the agenda.
we just got back to the back corner of the property and Doug beat us here and already got a jump start. Man, I love that dozer blade on that skid steer. That is just the coolest thing ever. And Doug is an artist on it too. One of these days we'll have to take you over there and show you just some of the excavating dirt work he's done over on his trails. Looks like a motocross track back through his woods. Combination of a motocross track and a highway. You can see how much, how much wider he's making these trails, smoothing them out, flattening them out. One thing I wanted to do before Doug got back here is you can see the trail used to run in between these two trees and it was always really tight. So when Klein was here, I had them cut that one down thinking I might take that stump out. However, there's no way to dig that stump out without getting into the roots of this tree here. So what we're left with is trying to move the trail over where the excavator is sitting and dig out this stump instead so that we can still have our nice wide sweeping trail. So the trail's up there, it's gonna come around this way and in through here. Right now we're kind of going around it, but it's real steep and off to the side here. Plus all these roots are making it difficult. So this stump here is gonna be a challenge. This is a big one. And not only that, but there's two of them. You got this one, the big one, and you got a small one there. So let's see if a little six ton mini can do it. So if you guys remember from this morning, this was the trail that we peeled all the uh, dirt that had flung off the bottom of the trail, pulled it all back up, and now Doug's gonna doze it out. He'll probably still need to cut a little bit on the high side to level it out. We still want a little bit of a pitch so that rain doesn't run down a ditch on this side. It'll actually just shed off to the side. 
but the way it was, it was just way too steep to get a tractor on or anything that has any kind of high center of gravity. So this was an old logging trail that came to another part of our property that we've never had access to just because it was too steep and overgrown. And Doug's got, got this open back up here in a matter of about three minutes with that dozer blade. Come down here, cross the little uh, creek bed bottom there and go up the, to the other side. So the last thing Doug's gonna do while he's got the skid loader and the dozer blade over here is uh, come in and clean up our new firewood yard expansion. Uh, while Klein Energy Services was here, they ran their ASV with the forestry mulcher on it and mowed down all these little saplings, maple saplings in here. It's got a bunch of mulch and stuff that you really can't work in here yet because you'd be tripping over sticks all the time. So Doug's gonna come in here and try to push some of that stuff out of the way.
Well guys, we got the wood yard expansion project started. We got all that slash out of here with that skid loader and the dozer blade. Tell you what, that thing is pretty slick. I don't know exactly what we want to do in here yet, but we got the area cleared and that's half the battle. Like I said, this is uh, pretty rare to have good flat ground here on our property. But yeah, this slash pile over here is pretty impressive. This will all break down. I bet you if I were to get in there with the uh, excavator and start stirring that around, you might get some steam to start coming out of there. It's basically just a bunch of mulch. But yeah, I don't know what we want to do here. Looks like it might be a good home for tractor attachments, maybe uh, some kind of pavilion, the sawmill, the Yappa, East Inmate Axis. I'm not sure what we'll put down here or how we'll lay it out, but it's always good to have good flat ground. Let's take a quick ride back through the woods and see what the uh, trails ended up looking like. So this was the main skid road that they used to drag all those logs out and uh, this got tore up pretty decently and as you can see now coming in and out of the woods it's like a super highway you could get a semi truck back in through here. I was talking to Doug I said Doug how would you compare because he had a, a John Deere 650J bulldozer uh, before he said he had it for 20 years and then eventually ended up downsizing to his skid loader with the dozer blade. So Doug, how would you compare that to the skid loader or to your bulldozer? And he said, you probably could have got the work done in half the time, but the steel tracks would have ended up tearing everything up. So you wouldn't have got quite the finish grade that we have here. And he said, the only other way around that would be to back drag everything after you got it all smoothed out, which would have just added to your time. And it probably wouldn't have been quite as fast as half as quick as the skid loader. So. You know, it's, it's definitely a, a finish grade tool. Um, the way I consider it is that skid loader with the dozer blade is to a bulldozer what a tractor and a box blade is to the skid loader and the dozer blade, if that makes sense. We spent probably, I don't know, eight hours back here in the woods working on all these trails. And, uh, you know, Doug said with the dozer, you probably could have got it done in four. If I was to have come back here and tried to do that with the tractor and the box blade, it probably would have taken me two days. So two days for the tractor, one day for the skid loader and the dozer blade, probably a half a day with the bulldozer is kind of the way I think of it. So as you guys just saw, that hill we came up is pretty steep. And this was that section of trail that when they skidded the logs out, it kind of dropped off to this side. We pulled all that material back up. Now I just got done saying that a tractor with a box blade would be half as fast as the skid loader with a dozer blade. But I think something like this where you're trying to cut and fill, I don't even know if you could actually do it because what he was digging into on the high side here to fill the low side was pretty hard ground, a lot of clay and a lot of shale. And I mean, maybe if you had a hydraulic link, a hydraulic top link and a hydraulic side link, you could do it. But I mean, without one, you'd be sitting there fiddling with your uh, linkages, your side link arm, your top link, and just trying to get that grade to cut into the, the top hillside there. And it wouldn't be a lot of fun.
So I thought I'd show you this clip from the logging job four weeks ago as sort of a before and after. This is the same part of the trail I'm about to start riding on, so keep that in mind in comparison to what it looks like now. So this is that one section of trail that we had the two different stumps in there and we had to decide which one we wanted to take out. And as you can see, this trail here just scoots right along through here. Again, we decided to leave that one because it was going to be intertangled with a tree that was still alive. And I'll tell you what, that was one heck of a stump. I don't know if I would have been able to get that with just the excavator. As you saw, we were able to use both machines to get it out, but it sat right here and, uh, Doug got it all smoothed back out, filled back in, and now we've got a nice clean trail that runs through here without, you know, weaving in between tree stumps like we had before. Anyways, guys, I think that's gonna about wrap this one up. One more thing, very important. As a big thank you to neighbor Doug, I would like each and every one of you to go over to his YouTube channel, One Eye Customs, and check out one of his videos and hit that subscribe button. He is at 9,370 subscribers right now at the time I'm filming this, and I really would like to see him hit 10,000 subscribers this weekend. So if you would do that, I would greatly appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.